Hello, today I want to go through how to adjust your Brunton compass for magnetic declination. I'll also be going through how to use an adjusted compass to take a bearing from a map and follow it and also, most importantly, what happens if you forget to do it or you get it wrong. Let's say that you're hiking around the Mammoth Lakes area of the Sierra Nevada mountains in the west of the USA. There you go, there's a map of it in case you don't know where it is. Now, if that's the case, then it means that today your declination is 12, just over 12 degrees east. Now, 12 degrees east doesn't seem much, but as an example, let me show you something. I'm going to take a bearing from that tree, small tree that you can see behind me, and I've got a bearing of 312. So what happens if my declination is 12 degrees east and I forget to do it? I just happen to have one of these. Bear with me on this bit. <laughs> it may, may take me a while. So if I hadn't adjusted for magnetic declination, I wouldn't have ended up there. I'd actually end up here. Now, that doesn't seem much, <laughs> you know, it's only a few feet, but what happens if you're trekking two miles and you forget to do the declination or you get it wrong? If you're trekking two miles and you should have put 12 degrees east declination on your compass and you didn't, you would miss your target by just under half a mile. Um, for the Europeans, that's 670, just 670 meters. So two miles, by the way, for Europeans is about 3,200 meters. So it's really, really important that you actually do set your compass um, for the magnetic declination in your area. So let's jump straight into it and see how it's done on a Brunton compass. You can see the declination scale inside the dial on your Brunton compass. I'll drop it onto your screen so you know what I'm talking about. As you can see, it says east deck at one end of the, uh, the dial, and then there's a series of numbers running around the inside of the dial all the way to where it says west deck. Now those numbers correspond to your magnetic declination in your area. As an example, if your declination was 10 degrees west, then you would use the 10 degrees west mark on the declination scale. If your de declination was 15 degrees east, you would use the 15 degrees east mark on the declination scale. It's quite simple. At the moment, this compass is set to zero declination because the base of the orienting arrow is actually pointing at the zero on the declination scale. So we need to turn it. This is the east declination on this side and the west declination is over there. So we need to point the base of the orienting arrow to 12 degrees east. The way we do that, turn the compass over, put your finger in the middle on the base of the pivot and put your thumb on the top and then simply pinch. And then all you do, keep this hand still. I know this is not what it says on the Brunton website, but it's, this is actually the easiest way to do it. And then all you're going to do while you're pinching it is turn the actual bezel itself. And you can see, let's just get the uh, north arrow. So at the moment it's set on 12 degrees, but I'll show you that again. So we pinch and then you can see it's moving the base of the orienting arrow. And it's really not easy to do. It's a bit stiff. So there you go, that's set on 12 degrees. Now, how do we use this on a map? Let's say that I'm coming off this mountain here, which is Ben, ben Lomond, a mountain on the shores of Loch Lomond. And I'm coming down the track, I, I walk along the summit ridge, start down the track, and as it does a lot in Scotland, it starts to snow. I can't see the track anymore, the snow is getting thicker, it's a complete whiteout, and what I need to do is I need to get off the mountain as soon as I can. So I decide that I'm going to navigate straight across the country, in this direction, to where this track goes through this deer fence. Now this deer fence goes all the way along, so I can only get through it in uh, a few points. For those of you who don't know, deer fences are about 10 foot tall, and you just can't get, you need a gate. So I'll zoom in a little bit more so you can actually see what I'm, what I'm going to do. So here I am, this is where I am on this track here, by this uh, peak here, and I need to go across the land in a straight line to here, where this track goes through the uh, deer fence there. So all I do is I put my compass on the map, so it's touching where I want to go to and where I am. 
Now, some, if you hadn't adjusted the declination, you could simply point the orienting arrow straight up the map like that. Now, the problem is, you've just when you altered the declination, you changed the way the orienting arrow points. So you can't use that. What you need to do is use the, deck, the orienting lines, which are printed inside the dial, which are these black lines you'll see inside Brunton compasses. So let's put them back on. Here we go. And that gives me a bearing of, let's have a look, let me get this straight. Using the orienting lines, it gives me a bearing of 238. So this compass is adjusted. So all I need to do, if I wanted to follow that, would simply rotate the compass until the magnetic needle is directly over the orienting arrow and I would follow this directional arrow here. So it would actually go in that direction. Now, if I forgot to do the declination, even on a small sort of trip of, this is what? Let's have a look. So it's, five, so it's 550 meters from the track to the gate, which would over 12 degrees, hang on, let me just work that on my calculator on my phone. That is, means I would miss my target by 414 meters. So I would end up, instead of being there, I would end up 100 meters down here. Now the problem is, I wouldn't know where I was on the fence. So I'd have to start doing relocations in the snow and in the fog and everything. And it, it's just better to remember to actually set your declination. So that's how you set the declination on a Brunton compass and take a bearing from a map and follow it. Thanks for watching.